Okay, hi, I'm Steve Croft. Uh, it's a pleasure to have Joanne Corey here, uh, winner of the Breakthrough Prize for Life Sciences. I understand um, you grew up with quite a few brothers and we were wondering what was that like <laughs> and what influence did it have on your life? It had a big influence on my life because they, they were always giving me a hard time. I had four brothers and one sister, but I was in the middle of all the boys, you know, so I was the brunt of a lot of their bad jokes and you know and so go, going into a lab or working in science where it's a male dominated kind of humor I could I knew about that stuff you know it didn't really bother me I could shake it off a lot easier than some other women that were my contemporaries yeah so yeah they had a big they gave me the thick skin I needed uh -huh. I guess that's the real answer <laughs> yeah if you hadn't become a scientist what do you think you would have done I don't know I mean, I think I had a dream I could be a dancer or something like that. But, you know, I don't think I would have done that probably. I don't know what I would have done, actually. So did you know you wanted to be a scientist at an early age? No, I didn't. I was a late bloomer. Pun, it, pun is intended in that case. <laughs> but, um, yeah, because um, I, just, I was devouring books when I was young, you know, but they weren't really science books. And so um, I don't know... I think it was genetics. When I took genetics, I realized this is the subject that explains why we're all different from each other. I found that to be fascinating. So, and then I think I was, I was caught. And that was in college, though. Mm -hmm. So it was late, you know, later than most scientists will tell you they, they got the bug. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what drew you to plants? Again, I came to plants late, you know. I had just told this story recently, so I was working in bacteria, and I did my PhD in microbiology, and then I was going to do a postdoc, and that's a typical academic route in biology or life sciences in general. And so um, I wanted to do something with genetics about eukaryotes, you know, where there was like two copies of a gene, and you could see it segregating out. And I went and visited two types of labs, plant labs, I don't know why I picked them, but I did. And then fly labs, Drosophila labs, which is another model for animal development. And I just thought the fly labs seemed like they were way too competitive, you know. I wanted to go chill a little or whatever. And so the plant guys were more chill. And so, but you know, in the end they really weren't. The field, you know, took off right when I got into it. It was a very lucky choice for me. I, I don't think I was that well thought out that I knew a field would take off, but it did. And so I was like there when it happened. So I feel like I was a bit lucky on that one. <laughs> yeah. What's the biggest mystery about plants? Biggest mystery about plants? Why we're all so blind to them, you know? I don't understand that. Because plants are really, you know, they're so interesting. You know, they do things different than animals, you know? So when a plant needs to do something new, it kind of thinks about it for a while, and then it kind of maybe duplicates a gene and gives it a slightly new function. And so it's just another whole way of life. And it's, that's really different than how animals would, would take on a problem like that. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, um, so it, the biggest problems are actually we don't know much about plants because there's so little funding compared to biomedical research. And it's a shame because, you know, right now with the planet, the planet's at, at a crossroads. I can keep on saying this to people. Because, you know, I think we're just heating up to the point where mammals will not survive very well. And so only plants are going to get us out of that, in my feel. It's my feeling. And yeah. you're refocusing your energies now from pure research into climate change? Yes, I am. <laughs> it's a big change for me. But, you know, it isn't really that big a change. So I've been thinking about plants for about 30 years now. So, you know, so I understand, like, where they're coming from, I think. And I understand that you know the, what we want to do is just sequester more carbon in the ground by having roots grow deeper than they normally do. You can actually select genes that tell you that the roots should go down and not spread out along the surface. So we want roots that go down, and we want roots with more biomass. And we want to put carbon from CO2, fix it into the stable polymer that all plants make. And they make it in their roots, so we just need to get them to make more. And the reason why I think this is going to work, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, it's scalable, you know, so you can do it on a few plants. And, and it's also distributive, so you can, like, involve as many farmers as you need to. 
But we actually did the numbers and we think we can take out half of what humans put up there every year that the, that the carbon cycle cannot deal with if we just have 5% of the cropland for our crops, and our crops are gonna be these deep-rooted, polymer-rich things that put this stable polymer into the soil. And, um, and they're also gonna be sustainable agriculture for food, for people, because we're gonna have 11 billion people by the end of the century. Yeah, so we really have to deal with the CO2 problem now, though. And that's why I just said, you know, I have to quit like screwing around, you know, it's time to like, get busy and give the world to my kids in better shape than it is right now. So if I can be a part of that, I really want to be a part of that. And do you see a barrier to that being the sort of misinformation and fear around um, genetic manipulation? Well, you know, it might be a barrier, but we have a way we can do it without involving GMO. So I think right now we're going to just not involve GMO unless people feel differently about it. It's not worth the fight in my mind, because we know we can do it without it. <laughs>